Hello everyone and welcome to the part two video for the day three bonus Monday video. I'm going to jump right on in and say that I have started working in this page by just adding a splot of purple, a lavender color down on the paper and I've let that dry. And I'm moving on to adding uh, just a hair darker of purple. Um, adding that as uh, the drawing for what we're going to be looking at for day 18. I think it's day 18. I may be wrong, but it's one of those days for the Nature Art Challenge. And I cannot wait for you to see the final look of this piece. I was so tickled working with this one. I loved how it turned out. It's exactly what I was looking for. Just a little splash of color and a little drawing um, buried in a, you know, simple white sheet of paper. And it turned out perfectly. So in the picture, you'll see that I am kind of adding things to the picture. It's not exactly like what you see in the photograph. Um, this is also something that I really enjoy doing is using the photograph as a reference point, but it is never the end all break all of what my artwork looks like. It's never going to look like the photograph. I never want it to look like a photograph. I just need something to look at in order to know where things can go, like what this may look like next to this something, like just how it all works in relationship to each other, what the perspective is like, all that jazz. But once I get the bare bones down, like what, you're seeing, what you see me doing here, um, adding the rocks and the pathway and the waterfall that I pull out of my imagination, once I get all that down, then I start getting more adventurous and imaginative and a little bit more wild in my creating. And that is the fun part of this whole piece. I love how that completely turned out. So as you can see now, as I'm adding the green grass in here, down at the bottom, you'll see how my marks are coming into play. Like we talked about in the part one video, this is me putting into practice what I had talked about um, in knowing exactly what my marks will represent. I knew for a fact that these kind of lines, these little squiggles, I knew that they would represent grass really well, or ground. And then I'm also putting down exactly what I just talked about. Don't be afraid to use your imagination. You'll see me doing that a lot in this piece. Don't always go by the photograph. Um, always kind of branch out and use your own imagination. I want to apologize in this recording. You're going to hear my air conditioning go off and on and off and on. I do apologize for that. I hope it doesn't drown out my voice. But yeah, don't be afraid to use your imagination. Get really creative when you start adding things. So that's why you see a waterfall. Obviously, you don't see a waterfall within this piece. But I thought, hey, that would be really cool to add that instead of the trees. And guys, I don't add a single tree to this drawing here. I know. I, I almost feel like I'm committing a crime here or something. I cannot believe I've done this. <laughs> No trees whatsoever. It feels really, really strange. But I'm focusing on other things. I'm really trying to uh, do a different kind of style. Uh, creating something really new and different. And creating this small little moment of a uh, little piece of nature 
in like a little bubble. You'll see how that is all formed. Um, so that's where I really use my imagination. And my marks are really coming to play here in the in the back there where the 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 hmm, what would you call it? I guess the cliff where the waterfall is falling over. I wouldn't say a cliff, but like a hill or a something completely completely loss of words right now <laughs> but a piece of land that that is uh, dark in that part where the waterfall is coming over so that I really liked how that one turned out even though they're bold shapes and they're not very small and distant looking they're quite bold and in your face I'm not quite disappointed in that I kind of like how it's rather bold and and up front I think it all kind of works well together and also, um, kind of backtracking a little bit here, that purple blob that I had going on at the very, very beginning before anything started here, um, that has really helped in developing where things go. If you can see uh, the very peak of that purple slab of color um, at the very bottom of the page is the the ending of the waterfall where it kind of uh, falls over and crests over. And then also you'll see where the bottom part of that purple slab, it is uh, the end or the beginning of the path and the end of the water or the river area. So every time I add like a little slab of color underneath, I always use that as a guideline to help me know where things start, where things end, where things begin, where things flow and all that stuff. I always use that to my advantage and I'll never ignore that. And I really like how that turned out. It just makes it interesting. And there's that, that's my mark too, as well as adding those big bold shapes. Even though it's underneath, it still is something I really enjoy doing. And it's something I've been practicing and trying to figure out how to use to the best of its ability. Things are really starting to come together now. All my marks are really coming into play and the colors that is really something I'm focusing on too. All the colors that I mentioned to you in part t in uh, part one of this video um, for day three of the Monday bonus videos, I really talked about my color palette and what specific colors I use and these are really shining here. I use every single bit of my colors more so in the paint medium than that of anything else. I think the only thing I used other than paint was maybe the green the green brush marker. I think that's about it. And then everything else is paint. And I love it. It's the pinks, the greens, the purples, and then a little yellow just for a little splash of, you know, warmth down at the bottom and that oh just this whole thing the whole thing I'm really loving how this turned out and I really want to do more of these and like I've said before this challenge is really making me realize uh, different kinds of ways of uh, creating my artwork I'm learning new ways and developing new uh, attributes to my style and I'm ooh, it makes me want to create more and more and more so then the very last finishing touch that oh, I'm so glad I did, I was really hesitant in doing it, but I did it and I added this nice bold green line around the whole thing to, like I said, make it look like it's a little glimpse in time, a little moment in nature. And it just, oh, I love it. It looks so graphic and fun and, oh, I love it. Really pleased how that turned out. So then the last little bit of notes is um, is play with uh, a few of your favorite colors. Yes, that's what it says. Play with, play with a few of your favorite colors and lay them next to and on top of each other. And what I mean by that is if I flip back to my this part of my sketchbook, which by the way, I do apologize it being so um, out of frame. I forgot my phone had moved. <laughs> but... I played with colors and I laid them on top of each other and I set them side by side. I looked at colors and how they apply on the paper side by side and saw how they worked together and how well something sits next to each other on top of each other and that really really helps to know 
how they can best be used in your artwork. That's something to play with and practice. I challenge you to try that and do that in your sketchbook somewhere. And then also in the kit, I haven't shown you all me using this list of creations yet, but um, it was something that I thought you guys might like to use to to record, to write down, to jot down some ideas for each day of the Nature Art Challenge. And I've written down all the ones that I've done and I've caught myself up all the way up to waterfalls and pathways. So that's how I use mine and I really, really like it. It's also, this little kit is a way to record and document things that you've learned in this challenge, things that you really want to focus on and uh, make notes about it. And yeah, that that I really enjoy using this kit. I'm not, I haven't been putting my photographs in it like I should have and I do apologize about that, but Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. <laughs> but, yeah, that's this whole challenge, and that's this specific day. This was Waterfalls and Pathways, and it worked out perfectly. And I hope you guys have enjoyed that. So, join me next time, next week, next Monday, for day four, the final bonus video for Monday. And that will be, uh, I can't remember what it was. Oh, Sassafras and Vines. That's the last one that we're going to talk about. So you'll see how all that works out. I hope to see you next Monday and thank you guys so much for participating. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.